Bentley Mulsanne Speed 2017 Review From 229,360 pounds 7. Point. An enthralling delight on so many levels, and yet disappointing in a few critical areas. What is it? It's a bit of a vehicular oxymoron, isn't it? A Mulsanne to drive rather than to be driven in. And yet that is just what Bentley maintains the Mulsanne speed is. And while a, near enough, three-ton limo that is also a driver's car seems a faintly ridiculous proposition, the flip side is that this is a 530 bhp, sub 5.0 sec to 0 to 62 miles per hour, 250,000 pounds car. Of course, such a posh wedge of automotive real estate should be special to drive. And people who love cars will want to drive such an opulent thing. So, what's wrong with making a version of the Mulsanne that caters for them? Even so, the first question we need to address here is one of expectations. Bentley might choose to describe the Mulsanne Speed as a driver's car, rather like Porsche might describe its Cayman GT4 as a driver's car. All this means is that somebody needs to have a sit down with Bentley's marketing people and explain why they need to be a bit more imaginative. Let's face it there are driver's cars, and then there are cars that are memorable, enjoyable spectacular, even to drive. If it does the job well, this is only ever going to fall into the latter category, and that's more than enough to delight us. Having now armed ourselves with the blindingly obvious fact that the Bentley Mulsanne Speed isn't going to be as incisive to drive as any kind of sports car, thereby not actually being a driver's car in our books, we can turn our attention to what it does feel like. This facelift has brought a fairly small sum of mechanical alterations beneath the substantially new all-new four of the A-pillar in fact and sleeker looking exterior. These changes include new active engine mounts and suspension bushes, and advanced foam architecture for the Dunlop tires to improve refinement. This combines with the standard air suspension and the velvet padded hammer blow that is the 6.75 liter bi-turbo V8 petrol engine. What's it like? This is the first time we've driven the Mulsanne Speed in the UK, and suffice to say that it presses the road into submission in as pleasing a fashion as it ever has. It doesn't drive so much as it parades, preceded at all times by the Bentley force field, that intangible aura of superiority that seems to be stitched into its cars with as much care and thoroughness as the carefully selected bullhide. Naturally, with 811 pounds foot from 1750 rpm, a quick getaway is perfectly easy. A stupendously rapid one, if you really want it. But everything from the soft throttle response and long pedal travel to the sheer mass surrounding you makes those sort of antics feel frankly vulgar. Entertaining, yes, because there is an edge of irreverence to the Mulsanne speed. A brief glimpse of rock and roll exuberance somewhere in the mutter of that V8, the chirrup of the tires as you make the aforementioned vulgar getaway, the landslide of torque that sweeps you through the short-lived rev range. Then, of course, on co the buzz has worn off you can twist the button into comfort mode and enjoy the sublime refinement. This is really where the Mulsanne excels. Bentley reckons that the fancy tire technology should cut noise in the cabin by 4 decibels, and bear in mind that the pre-facelift Mulsanne was hardly unrefined. Now short of some unfathomably complicated light switches and a fruit bowl on the dashboard, it's like tooling around in a posh hotel suite. Hit a steady motorway stride, and engine, and tire noise die down to a near inaudible background thrum. Wind flutter is the only thing that dares to intrude on your consciousness as the Bentley punches a hole through the air. It's in this unashamedly laid-back attitude that the Bentley feels wholeheartedly epic. In fact, it almost seems to buy you time and a relaxed attitude. After all, turning up late is only to be expected everyone else can wait. And yet, there is that tricky question of expectations again. Should this be a car that can deliver a modicum of involvement and handling prowess? Well, snake that rotary dial into sport and give it a go, and to be honest you might be a little underwhelmed.
Any kind of vigorous cornering and the Mulsan will lean ponderously on its front tire until it eventually gives up under the pressure and hands you fistfuls of rather uncouth understeer. Yes, you can provoke it into oversteer. Of course you can it has 811 pounds foot going to the rear wheels. But really? Really? You're not going to do that, are you? Don't do that. Or am I going to have to explain the driver's car slash not a driver's car thing again? The steering, too, feels a bit too meaty at low speeds when you might want the oily, light precision that a Rolls-Royce Phantom serves up in spades. It does, though, wait up and deliver a fair sense of connection at higher speeds when you can inject a really satisfying sense of fluidity to proceedings on the right sort of sweeping, high-speed curves. Now, to the biggest problem here, ride comfort. Speed or not, the Mulsan is a car that will be defined by the level of serenity buffering occupant from road, and it isn't quite good enough in the UK, either in the back or the front seats. Sure, put it in comfort mode and it lopes over high frequency or long wave imperfections, brushing off eroded tarmac and awkward cambers with casual ease. But then you hit a recessed drain cover, or a sharp edged pothole, and feel the unexpected shiver and thud as those air springs find the end of their travel. In the incrementally firmer Bentley mode, you also feel an echo of the road's undulations and scars. Go for sport and you seem to get very little extra body control in return for ride comfort that's another notch further away from what you want in a Mulsan. There's a touch of patter here, a shiver there, a hint of a fidget over town roads. Don't get us wrong, the Bentley Mulsan speed rides with a sort of majestic stride that most will be very happy with, but anyone who has driven the now out-of-production Phantom will know that the Bentley's waft just isn't of quite the same exceptional vintage. Still, there are other areas in which the Mulsan speed has really moved on. Namely in the multimedia area, where you'll now find a new 8.0 in infotainment touchscreen nestled in the dashboard. Before we get to that, we'll mention that we'd like fewer buttons scattered across the dashboard, since it's easy to get a bit flustered by the sheer number of switches, and it doesn't look too pretty, either. But it's still a lavish treat of an interior, and the redesigned seats are wonderful, just soft enough without being armchair-like, supportive in all the right areas, adjustable to a T, an absolute delight. I want one in my living room. While the plethora of switches looks a bit old school, that new infotainment is quite the opposite and is one of the most significant updates to the facelift Mulsan range. The system's graphics and layout are bespoke, and very classy they look, too, and between the touch screen, rotary button, and voice control, it's easy to find your way around the various functions. This all comes with the full complement of media connectivity and a 60 GB hard drive, although you do have to pay extra some £14,890 for the entertainment specification pack that brings the superb Nyam audio system and two 10.4 in retracting touch screens for the rear passengers with wireless headphones thrown in. These can display Google Maps with the relevant travel info for your journey, any app-based feature that you could want including games, video streaming and the like. Should I buy one? So, after all that, the unsavory truth is that the Bentley is neither a driver's car, nor quite the class-defining, indulgent limousine that the Phantom was. But that past tense is quite critical, since the Phantom is now no more until the new one arrives in 2018, leaving the Mulsan is in a class of its own for the meantime. You could mention the Mercedes Maybach S600, but it just doesn't seem in quite the same sphere as the Mulsan, does it? It's certainly not in the same price bracket, at least. So, the Bentley's not faultless, and the Phantom was better. Even so, there is every reason to want to drive and own one of these most remarkable automotive creations. There's shock and awe in every stomach-churning burst of speed, and every spectacular handcrafted detail. No shadow of a doubt there's just as much to be enthralled with here as there is with any pinnacle sports car. The enthusiast landscape is all the richer for its existence, and long may that continue. 
Bentley Mulsanne Speed Location Surrey, UK On sale Now Price £252,000 Engine V8, 6,752 cubic centimeters, twin turbocharged, petrol. Power. 530 bhp at 4000 rpm. Torque. 811 pounds foot at 1750 rpm. Gearbox. 8 SPD automatic. Curb weight. 2,685 kilograms. 0 to 62 miles per hour 4.9 sec top speed 190 miles per hour economy 18.8 mpg combined co2 slash tax band 342 g slash km 37 percent rivals bmw 760 li mercedes maybach s600 Thank you.